This is a tricky I question because the sub pop's gone through a lot of different vibes and phases. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can check so check out the Wolf Eyes question. Burned Mind record. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to know something funny that was on Sub Bob in 2003 or whatever, and also a killer record, and also maybe something that not everyone out there in the world has even heard that exact type of music that they say you already know the Mud Honey record. And you know the Postal Service record, and you're like, cool, I think I got it. Well, check out the Wolf yeah. Eyes Burned Mind record. It kind of sounds like, you know, something that you would also love because of those other two records. <laughs> this is episode five of the Sub Pop Podcast. We've made it this far. I'm Arwen <laughs> Nix here with the indefatigable Alyssa Atkins. Hey, Alyssa. Hello. I like indefatigable. <laughs> I might not be able to pronounce it, but I like it very much. We just also heard from Ethan Miller of Heron Oblivion. Also, Sub Pop's Comments on Fire. Mm-hmm. We had a really fun, great conversation with them. That's just a little snippet of the good times with those guys. Yeah, we're going to try and figure out how to bring you more of that conversation later in the season. Yeah, they're all so great. If you get to talk to Ethan Miller, you're going to ask him about music, and he gave us some good advice on... Yeah. Let's listen to a little bit of Wolf Eyes. Wolf Eyes. Eyes. So he referenced Wolf Eyes. Let's hear it. Okay. So, yeah, what do you think? Is that you might also love... Yeah. Wolf eyes, if Postal you like. service, mud honey, <laughs> wolf eyes. Solid advice. Thanks, yeah. guys. Thank you. So today on the podcast, we're going to be hearing from Shannon and Cody of Shannon and the Clams, who I spoke to a few months back. A few months, like Halloween, right? It Halloween was, night? It was Halloween night. This is another good example of what Arwen's <laughs> willing to do to help us out to get interviews. Yeah. She shows up backstage to meet these guys for the first time as they're about to perform mm-hmm. on a Halloween show at Numos, maybe? Yeah, it was a big show at Numos. It was a big deal. They were putting their costumes on, and I was just like in their way like Shannon was looking in the mirror during the interview getting her costume makeup on like while it was there accommodating and I- us yeah being very like so kind sure come and talk to us but my favorite part of envisioning this since I was not there is that Arwen shows up with her microphone in her where's Waldo costume yeah, so was, that she'd be easy to spot I thought that like oh and since we haven't met each other I can dress up as Waldo and they'll <laughs> be able to find me and they'll be like who what do you look like I'll be like Waldo and yeah, um, very good planning. I love all of that. Thanks. I also just really love you, picturing you as Waldo for the conversation that you guys ended up having. Yes, think about that. Think about a vampire, <laughs> an alien, and Waldo are having this, this conversation. conversation. We had a very interesting conversation at lunch today, and it made me wonder where everyone's first time seeing pornography was my older sister um used to she's like four or five years older than me and so when i was like pre-teen she used to take me to her friends parties and they'd be like drinking and stuff you know and uh one day one night in the summer or something she came to my uh, over to my room and like knocked on my door really late and was like hey come sneak out with me and i was like okay cool and we snuck out she's like we're gonna go to the neighbor's house we went to our neighbor's house who was like her the same age as her this guy and uh, we like went through the bushes and knocked on his window and he was laying in his bed watching like this really gnarly porn, like 80s porn video. <laughs> we knocked on the window and he's like, oh, hey, what's up? So he's laying there like watching it, but like he wasn't jerking off or anything. He was just kind of like hanging out, waiting for us to come over. <laughs> and he wasn't, he didn't like hide it or anything. And we just sat and had like a weird conversation with him through the window. Shannon, what was the first exposure you had to pornography? I like grew up in the country and I had a really long bus ride to school. Every day I was the first one picked up in the morning at like right before 6 a.m. And then the last one dropped off, which is around 6 p.m. I know, 
But my neighbor who just lived two properties away, he got dropped off like 25 minutes before me. So I'd get off at his house and we'd hang out and then I'd walk back to my house when I felt like it. But one day I went over there and um, he was like, do you want to watch Beavis and Butthead? And I was like, fuck yeah, I want to watch Beavis and Butthead. Because I wasn't allowed to, I was Mormon and my mom thought it was really offensive. So I was like, yes, I'm taking this opportunity to watch Beavis and Butthead finally. And he snuck it out of his brother's room and put it on and it was just porn. So instead of like turning it off, we just sat on like opposite ends of the couch silently watching porn, like complete silence, the whole video. And then he got up and put it on again <laughs> and like <laughs> locked all the doors and windows and we watched it twice in a row, just like in complete silence. And then we went and made creepy crawlers and pretended like it never happened. Yeah. I guess one takeaway from that story is that at least Shannon's mom didn't have to worry that she was watching Beavis and Butthead. I know. I can picture everything that she's talking about, like the bus Perfectly. ride, walking over there, and then especially like the watching it in silence and then watching it again. Oof. Duh. But I also really like that this came from their conversation from lunch, and then you guys ended up talking about this. I love their stories. Yes. But it also sent you on this, like... When was the first time you watched porn Jag? Yes. <laughs> no, wait, I, Jag. When was the first time you watched porn Conversation Seeker? Yes, it's <laughs> it's a question I haven't been able to leave out of my interviews, <laughs> apparently. And we're going to, I do end up asking it again. Uh, <laughs> but first, let's take a break. Yeah, and let's take a break from the porn, please. Yeah. So here is this ad from the Megamart. Um, my favorite thing is just is music the soundtrack to your life? <laughs> and that's the whole ad. I think that's a really good one. With some, mu you know, with music. And Say it again. Is music the soundtrack to your life? One more time. Is music the soundtrack to your life? Say it as if you're actually asking me a question. <clears throat> like we're just talking? Yeah. Oh, um, so ridiculous. I know, you have to start by saying um, my name, and then I'll say yes, and then you ask the question. Arwen Nix? Yes, Stuart. Is music the soundtrack to your life? That's great. Your delivery was really good there. <laughs> so is music the soundtrack to your life? One, two, three. So pa I would say that's a decidedly unpornographic ad. It's the cleanest part of this episode. Yes. Hi, Dad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one gets there's a little bit of gets a little randy in this next part too. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we set out to do that necessarily. Apologies to any like uh, sensitive listeners, but you know you should know what you're getting yourself into. Whatever. This point. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's really not that bad. No. And actually, it's great because we got the opportunity to, well, you did, to yes. talk with John Benjamin, mm -hmm. who you may know him from like Dr. Katz, Archer, Can of Mixed Veggies from Wet Hot American Summer. Right, Bob's Burgers. Bob's Burgers, so much good stuff. Yeah. But we here at Sub Pop. Ooh, Master of None. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. He's really good in that. God, he's so great. But we at Sub Pop know him or first got to really officially work with him on his debut album, Well, I Should Have Learned to Play Piano. Which is a record that is incredible. The limited edition release from 2015, it's sold out now, but sold you can out. stream it, and you should, really, for any of jazz fans in your family. Yeah, we'll put some more <laughs> links to other interviews about that record and things on the website. It's but you will hear a little snippet of his music of from that album in this interview and see if case. you can discern why he named it that. Yeah, he was a gem to talk to. He was super nice. He was doing all these interviews. And then I called him in the middle of the day, you know, and I'm still at this point on like my I have to ask everyone about porn kick. And I ended up hanging up on him twice and then finally getting <laughs> then him on the phone. Him and then. Porn. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, here's this one. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Hi, I'm going to try it again. <laughs> Stop, just. Yo, no, I wasn't. I'm, yeah, I'm not humble. I'm just, I'm bad at it. I'm, hold on. Can you hear me? I can. Can oh, you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, we figured <laughs> it out. Relief. A couple other questions that I have for you. Um, sure. One is not really a question. It's just that um, I'm just a really big fan of yours. The first time I ever heard your voice was on Dr. Katz, and it was actually wow. it was the first time I ever got stoned. I had stolen pot from my brother and snuck outside and smoked it. You. Thank you. And I um, all by yourself. All by myself. Well, actually, no. I had my friend Sierra there with me, but I sent her home because I was embarrassed that I was going to do it wrong. Um, so then, then I was all by myself and, but then I went inside and I watched Dr. Katz. 500 bucks, baby. Read him and sleep. I'll tell you, this makes up for all those wasted afternoons trying to figure out the ponies. Huh? Wait, wait, wait. Did you say ponies? I said ponies. I, I laughed so hard and I, it's still like one of my top five memories, like was getting sewn for the first um, time and watching Dr. Katz. So thanks for well, that's your nice. part in that. Yeah. Well, it was like you were, uh, you did most of the work. I, <laughs> you got high and enjoyed something. That's true. But no, it's that first thing after you get high, you'll never forget. That. You'll never forget. But you were, you're that, you're that memory for me. So I'm just letting you know. Um, All right, I'm still trying to get rid of that friend who uh, I helped when he did ecstasy. He <laughs> won't forget that moment that I was the guy he first decided that <laughs> I'm going to anchor myself to John Benjamin. And he, for him, like 15 years later, we're still at that moment in time, and I keep trying to distance myself. Look, I don't care what you do in your private time, but don't lie about it. I mean, you clearly said smear mud on my ass. And I'll tell you something. If you want to smear mud on your ass, smear mud on your ass. Just be honest about it. Look, Gene, I've never told anyone this before, but I can suck my own dick, and I do it a lot. There, I said it. I was honest. Um, my my next actual question for you is, getting ready to talk to you today, I saw, like, the people that I usually interview for the work that I do never get interviewed. I'm, I'm not used to talking uh -huh. to people who do press tours. I'm usually talking to people who's house just burned down or what have you and so it's a very different circumstance okay. what i'm wondering looking at all the at the interviews that i pulled up of yours is do you at this point in your career get any enjoyment at all from being interviewed i uh, like very infrequently um I, i'm enjoying this this is nice well, um uh, yeah, you're welcome i i a lot of uh the sort of press junkets I do for maybe the animated shows that I'm in have become very redundant. Yeah. Hey, get in! What? Well, you have to, Conan, because I'm busy driving. And also browsing Tinder. Hey, hey! What am I supposed to do? It's real easy. You just swipe right if you want to bang and left if you think they're totally worthless. I know what Tinder is. I've used Tinder. You have? You're married. Yeah, it's how we hire interns. That's a lie, Conan. No, it's you just... You don't Tinder. use Tinder to hire interns. Do you remember the first time you ever saw porn? <laughs> um... Yeah, sorry to laugh. <laughs> no, I'm... No, it's built in. That's nervous laughter. When I, hear <laughs> I start to chuckle nervously, turn around, someone here. Um, uh, I, I do, I've, I know the first time I saw like a, a picture in a magazine. Um, what happened? It was, uh, I was in a, <laughs> literally in a treehouse with my friend, which I guess is like, I don't know, like the story <laughs> that is like the... I the don't believe you. you. Like, you can't like... believe you're in a treehouse. Oh, like, wow. Looking at porn, but his, he stole magazines from his dad, um, and he brought them up to the tree. Like, it was a real, like, it was a real moment. Like he, I waited in the treehouse, and he went and, and he climbed up and brought them in. His name was Michael Burks, 
Um, he was, I think, maybe besides his brother, the only uh, black kid who went to my really, really white school in Massachusetts. I was like in fifth grade or something. Are you guys still in touch? No, I hope he's well. I just loved him. I loved him and his family. They were like so nice to me. Um, he was like my best friend for a couple of years. Then he showed me porn. <laughs> uh, the next time I saw it, I think, was probably years later because I was very young. Um, what are you working on next? Uh, wow, like a lot of stuff I'm doing now. I have to write uh, a script for a TV show for IFC, uh, like an erotica show, kind of like the Red Shoe Diaries. You're going to write an erotica show script for IFC? Uh, yeah, we already, I've already written one. We've got to write another one, and um, hopefully they'll make it, yeah. Do you find yourself naturally good at writing erotica? No, but it's a sort of a comedy version of erotica, but not like too, uh, not uh, too zany. Uh, we're trying to keep it. We're actually trying to make erotica and comedy at the same time, which is does, might, might not work. Are you enjoying that process? Uh, we did. We shot a presentation, and we did have to shoot some very erotic scenes, and because we're we're trying to shoot the scenes for real, like we're not making jokes about this sex as much because it is sort of true to the way erotica used to be although our stories are a bit crazier are you Even in it some of the... yeah i'm kind of a narrator i'm the uh, guy who's bringing you the stories and uh, there are stories that have been shared to me that i'm sharing with you it sounds it's interesting funny. it sounds like a, like a nice play on the what is it like the penthouse letters kind of thing a little bit like that, yeah. There was a, there was a series uh, like early on in in the eighties, maybe yeah, probably mid eighties, early nineties. It was on a ton, like when pay cable, you know, the after midnight block mm -hmm. was all was all softcore pornography. Um, that's my sweet spot. <laughs> that's when I first saw porn. Was actually. Like those days, of like Cinemax and HBO and and that kind of yes. stuff. Yeah. Right. So that was like I had already been through the what I've already told you. Yeah. yeah. The treehouse. The trials and tribulations the, of the treehouse. I've tree been house. to the treehouse. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go to the treehouse. <laughs> I hope that magazine's still up there. That would be great. I, I, um, right. I, yeah. I think it's interesting. It's, I didn't even know you were doing this project, and I didn't. I didn't know that's where the porn conversation was going to go into. But it feels like a good natural uh, that's flow funny. now. That's totally. Yeah. It's totally a natural uh, uh, transition. I. Um, but I'm like I said. i uh, developing it now. So hopefully we'll. Like uh, hopefully it will work. It, the the presentation came out really well. Um, the sex scenes came out pretty cheesy. Do you feel sexy doing it? Like being part of it? Well, in the show, I like I'm the one who never. I I'll, I'm never in them. Although hopefully at some point I will. There's a kind of a B story of me trying to find love. Um, but I'm always the one just sharing other people's stories. I'm kind of the guy everybody tells their stories to. Right, but I'm, that wasn't my question. My question was, do you feel sexy being in it? Oh, being in it? Yeah. Well, there's like, like it. no, no. <laughs> like, it's sort of built into my character where I'm the outsider. I'm always kind of the, the observer as opposed to the one... I would be very, I've done the sex scenes before, and they're, they're very uncomfortable. I've only done two in my life. I'm sorry. Um, and they were both terrible. So well, I hope I, I don't have to do them. I hope that if you do end up doing those, that you can learn to feel sexy maybe better than you're learning to play the piano. Or at least enjoy it more. Uh, yeah, maybe that will be the next thing I can learn to do well. I'm, I'm sure there's lessons for that also. I can finally fake an orgasm. <laughs> oh, John, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to me. Is there anything that I didn't ask you about that you want to mention? No, that was really good. Thank okay. you very much. Cool. Being, I really, um, I appreciate this, and I'll let you know once we figure out what the hell we're doing with it. <laughs> okay, good luck. Okay, thanks, John.
All right, buddy. Bye. I know you think it's the Gene Show out there, but there's a line between entertaining and annoying. No, that's a myth. So, John, I know I told you that we would tell you what we were going to do with this when we figured it out, and this is it. Uh, <laughs> ta-da. Ta-da. <laughs> At the end of that interview, you heard a little clip of Bob's Burgers, which is both John Benjamin and Eugene Merman, who is also on Sub Pop. Yeah. who we're hoping to talk to next season for the podcast. Um, if we if we should be so lucky. If we should be p- blessed with his presence. <laughs> Ooh, speaking of who we are talking to, we told you last episode that this episode yeah. we would be talking to Nathan from So Pitted, um, which you did not hear and you will not hear in this episode because it's almost over. Uh, but you will be hearing his interview later in the season and we will also be hearing a lot of other things and we're figuring out that we shouldn't say exactly what it is because we're still making these episodes and sometimes things get juggled around. But we we are going <laughs> to... We are going... <laughs> what? It's true. Juggled around. We're in process right we now. Are. Each week we're making... We're making these as we go. Yeah, and so we're we're also going to be fulfilling the adjacent to sub pop part of these interviews. Like yeah, from that first episode, mm-hmm. we're talking about stories from inside, outside, and adjacent to. Well, here's some adjacent to yeah. conversations, right? Videographers. Yes. Other labels. Quality. Um, Quality other labels. Musician about town, Stacy Peck. Mm-hmm. We're going to be hearing more from other bands on both Hardly Art and Sub Pop, and maybe some more people who work here at Sub Pop. That's TBD. We've been talking to a lot of people making this podcast, and there's a lot of, like, we work with so many great people. We want to make sure that we're getting the full range of. Yeah. And we've been getting some good ideas from the emails. So which oh, we're, yeah. we're now starting to work on those as well. So if you want to, if you have an idea of what you want to hear on the Sub Pop podcast, write to us at podcast at subpop.com. Sub Pop podcast on Twitter great. and Facebook mm-hmm. um, or through the regular channel of Sub Pop. Sub Pop's yeah. official channels or we'll get, get you there too. send us a letter, whatever Both you like. Both and also. Um, this episode, we want to thank John Benjamin here on Oblivion, Shannon and the Clams. Um, thanks again to the Voice of the Mega Mart ads, Stuart. Yes, he's, and he's our webmaster as well. Yeah. Uh, Fine work, Stuart. Mm-hmm. And we heard music from Father John Misty, Comets on Fire, Wolf Eyes, Shannon and the Clams, the voice work of John Benjamin, and of course, Mud Honey. Yes. Special thanks to the Sub Pop Brass, as always. Uh, Chris Jacobs, Megan Jasper, Jonathan Poneman. Thank you. We'll see. Okay, that's it. See you next week. Okay, bye. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're doing your kind of like NPR voice a little bit. Yeah, oh, it's a little bit NPR. Yeah, okay. is it okay? Yeah, yeah sure. So how you did can you, talk in the back of a how did you feel like that, right? Is that okay? It's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, it almost it almost pans yeah. a little it's bit. Very, it's the yeah. Terry Terry yeah. yeah. filter. Do you, do you want the back the or the front? Yeah, what does the back do? Do you want it? <laughs> so how did you feel? When it works. Fresh. <laughs>